good, I guess it's still, no, it's good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here, actually. And uh, uh, I hope it's, it's my first visit, and I hope it's uh, the first of many. Uh, I also want to share the compliments that have been given before me uh, to the planners of this event. This is a fantastic event. It's very focused, and I think what you're hearing are a lot of uh, comments that reinforce the comments that of others have made. What I'm going to try to do is deviate only a little bit, um, try to make some points that are of interest, and do that as succinctly as I possibly can, understanding that I'm the last thing between you and food. And uh, that's not always a good place to be. Uh, a little bit about my background, I think, will be helpful. I have a, had a 28-year career in government. Um, in eight of those years, I was the county manager of uh, Miami-Dade County, Florida, which in the United States is a very large, uh, very sophisticated urban regional government. And in that capacity, I had a chance to really observe government and how it worked at that regional level and through those experiences formulated a lot of, of, of at least conclusions that I believe to be ones worth uh, considering. I also, since I left government, have been very actively involved in the state of Florida and beyond in advocating for the advancement of uh, public-private partnerships for the development of public infrastructure. Beyond that, I also teach courses in collaborative governance and networked government at Florida International University, and that's the point I think that is particularly relevant here. Um, your 2030 plan, which is quite visionary and quite focused, I was very impressed with it, references throughout the importance of partnerships with the private sector. And it's so intelligent that you're doing that. You're leveraging the strengths of different sectors, and I believe recognizing that government does not have to do everything itself. When we talk about revolutionizing the business of government, it's really, I think, recognizing that government does not have to do everything itself. Government does not have to be the bureaucratic command and control structure. It can be more of a collaborative network approach where you're engaging the private sector as partners. And not just partners, but value-added partners. It's hugely important because you can expand your reach dramatically. And it's not just the private sector, by the way. It's also potentially the not-for-profit sec not -profit sector and academia. All of these different groups together are really the way you're going to make the greatest impact on the greatest number of people with the best value proposition you can, act, you can come up with. Um, let's see if I'm doing this correctly. Indeed, I am. Um, I'm skipping through the slides just in the interest of time. I just picked this visual you've seen other visuals and the point here is when we talk about innovation and innovation e ecosystems i think the point of this visual is a it's enormously complex b there are a lot of organizations involved c it's not just government running the show and it is like has been an an analogized uh, by some like a living organism like a like a coral reef that every one of the pieces of this innovation ecosystem has to function and support one another for the entire system to thrive and succeed. No one part can work and the other not work. So you have all of these different entities and individuals that are part of this process, and government is only one of them. If government is trying to run something like this itself, it is destined for failure immediately. Um, so what is, what is government's role in these innovation ecosystems? And in fact, to me, it's really government's role beyond just an innovation ecosystem. Partnerships with the private sector and others can involve the delivery of social services. It can involve the delivery of education services. It can involve any number of different things, and it should not be viewed as a threat. It actually can uh, leverage the skills of government um, and focus on the things that really matter, and it's really steering the ship not necessarily rowing, if, if, if you follow. So government's role in an innovation ecosystem really is you're a leader, you're a champion, you're a facilitator, you're a collaborator, you incentivize, you're a partner, you're a resource, you're an investor, you're a, you provide infrastructure. Nothing here says you're actually turning the cogs yourself. You're facilitating, you're making sure it all works and you're letting it go. You're letting the organism, that coral reef function but you're making sure 
that everything's there that needs to be there for it to succeed and, and uh, to, uh, to flourish. So why the partnership? Well, each sector brings value. They bring unique value to the table. And for any service to really make a difference, I think the more experts you have at the table, the better. And the key word here is collaboration. Collaboration, I think, is, is what, what I at least speak to in the States, is, is really vital to extending the reach of government. Um, it, it just can't do it itself. I think that's probably the, as big a point as any to just pound on. Um, the private not-for-profit education partners, they bring expertise, specialization, innovation, speed and flexibility. Government can actually expand and contract its resource through these outside providers and not have to have this resource employed itself. It's very difficult then to adjust to the various demands that might exist. And critically, it, ex it extends the reach of, of government. So challenges, I'm not going to go through all of these in the interest of time, but the point is if you're going to come to this conclusion that you want to have a more collaborative or networked approach to government service delivery, whether it's in the area of innovation and knowledge exchange or it's one of those more um, traditional service areas of government, there are challenges. The skill sets of the government folks um, will, will change. And for all of your excellencies in here from the government sector, you know, it's, it is going to be, uh, it is a change that is not easy. But you want to develop skill sets where you're not, um, your folks aren't just commanding and controlling, but they're more nurturing and guiding. And I'll show you a visual in a moment. It's my simplistic analogy that I think really makes the point. Um, you're going to, when you have these networks, you have multiple organizations working together. Obviously, there are going to be challenges in data exchanges, communication issues. Are your goals shared? Are they consistent? Is the oversight uh, properly focused or is it distorted, contorted? Are the government folks supervising it actually just handing over supervision to the team or are they doing it themselves? Are they hiding behind rules and regulations? Um, there's a number of things that you have to be aware of, but none of those should be impediments to moving forward. Um, you integrate networks through, obviously, people, processes, communication channels, whether they're virtual or face-to-face, co-location. Values need to be aligned. And if there's one point that I think is important, we can talk about all of the science we want, we can talk about technology, but there's two things that I think are critical to success partnering with anybody. One is relationships matter. Relationships are crucial. You have to trust the people you're working with. The word trust is the most important word in any partnership. If you don't trust, don't do with that person or that group. Um, you sustain networks over time, obviously through the governance structures. These governance structures are governance structures that actually have on the governance table, if you will, not just people from the public sector, but leaders from the private sector players as well. And you sustain by sharing knowledge, and this is where trust comes in again. If you're sharing knowledge, you have to trust that the knowledge you share actually is not going to be knowledge used against you. Because remember, everybody in this partnership has their own business or their own government or their own agenda, and they have to, subs they have to make those agendas subservient to the main mission, which is the program or the project that you're trying to make successful. This is not easy. But to me, the projects I was, had experience with, the most successful ones is when the private and public sector players, and yes, they, they succeed, they make money. This is, you know, everyone gets, you know, if it's done right, everybody is gonna benefit. But everybody set, basically puts their own business objective aside, if that doesn't sound too naive, and they work for the project or the program. And if they work for the project or the program together as though they're actually partners, which they are, they will succeed and their own individual goals will then be accomplished. But they will follow the primary mission of really supporting the, the program or the project that you're trying to uh, advance. Uh, very quickly, these networks uh, really need to be decentralized, flexible, individualized. You need to hold people accountable based on desired results and outcomes and not how many widgets they produce or whether or not you know, everything on a checklist is checked off. 
it's different. It's got to be focused on outcomes. Um, the notion of risk, it's a different concept. I'm going to talk tomorrow about public infrastructure projects in a workshop, and risk is a very Mr. important Mr. George, thing if here. you can wrap up. Please. Yes, I will. Thank you. Um, sharing that risk is important, and it's a good thing for the government sector to be able to direct that risk to people who are better able to handle it from the private sector. This is what the public sector <coughs> leader should be, a symphony conductor, not a drill sergeant. If you just take that one point away, I figure I've done something pretty good. That conductor is making sure all of those, interest, in, those instruments perform in harmony, and the sound you hear is beautiful. That's what the new public sector leader has got to be. And I'm going to, I think, skip the rest in the interest of time. I can talk forever. God knows that. <laughs> Thank you.